Development Log 16 with a Sucker Free Games production. The designers, Danielle Dorsey. I love video games. William McDonald. What the hell? I was like, Kuba. The programmer, John Norman. Oh. Dang! Sprite artist, Bernard McKinney. I'll be right there. Armed with a fridge of energy drinks, an Xbox 360, and the Torque X 2D engine, this group of gaming geniuses have banded together in an unholy alliance to produce a masterpiece of retro gaming goodness. Dungeons. This is their true story. It's being developed as a satire of about 50 years of fantasy cinema. And so, um, there, there's certain stereotypes and stuff, and every single time we presented this, it's always been brought up. And so I'm just going to get it out beforehand. It is being developed for the Xbox 360 community game section. And that's where Microsoft lets you develop a game in C Sharp for their XNA framework. And uh, you pay about $100 a year for a Creators Club license that allows you to debug code on the Xbox 360. Marketing research shows that that price range sells about eight times more than the $5 price range. We decided to use the Torque X 2D engine because um, realistically it would take a long time. It would not, we would not complete, within this, complete the project within this quarter if we had a program in raw XNA. And um, Torque X did a, uh, did a lot of things. Um, uh, lets us create um, GUIs, uh, managing of scene objects, switching of scenes, loading of files. And so it has a lot of the basic groundwork done so we can focus on developing the game. Is that a product you have to purchase? Or? Torquex, yes. We had, um, they give away a free version, but we purchased the source code license that allows us you know, to modify the source code, which we have had to do. The um, main problems at the <coughs> Torque X engine. It's um, made by Garage Games, and um, they made a lot of the Torque engines. People probably heard of it. They would uh, power the old Tribes series of games, but um, they're all in C++. Torque X is in C Sharp, and there's not a lot of document. Documentation is kind of sparse and you know, all over the place, and I've had to <coughs> follow the internal workings of the engine a lot and, and uh, add my own stuff. The introduction of the game, so the, the basic premise is that there's the, the there's a group of legendary heroes, um, the heroes of light and virtue, and you are not these people. You play like the inconsequential NPCs in the background. The entire game focuses on you going around and making a mess of stuff while you um, see the, occasionally meet up with the actual heroes and watch and see what um, the good they're doing in the world. Here's some of the um, bosses that we have planned. The, um, this first guy right here is the Cobalt Commander. You'll see him in the um, demo that, I'm going to, that I'll show you guys. And he's the only one we have done, sort of, right now. We came very close to the end. I think within like the last day that, that program, I got the, the version of the boss done. We've hired out an artist to work on the Big Kahuna. We uh, rotoscoped one of our friends. That's where you put him in front of green screen and tell him to do stuff and uh, change that to images and that they draw over. Are there a lot of differences debugging the game on the Xbox as opposed to doing it on your PC? Um, no, not really. Uh, what, one thing you have to keep in mind, though, is that the .NET framework on the Xbox is a very light version of it. There's a lot of things that it does not have. And um, we've run into the problem before. We tried to, I tried to add a simple scripting language type thing. There's, um, there's actually something called CS script that allows you to, in your C Sharp application, allows you to um, import other C Sharp code and it'll compile it on the fly and load it into your project. And so um, that requires system.build and that doesn't exist on the Xbox. So I had to um, switch to using reflections. That's where you can um, get an instance of a class or a function. So um, it's basically um, like a function pointer in uh, C, but you can get it by the name of the function as a string. So it's, it's kind of slow. 
Did you run into any performance differences between running on a machine and running on the Xbox? It runs faster on the Xbox than my PC because it has more powerful hardware. Right? This thing only has a mobile radio thing. Um, the jumping Z port stuff was really difficult because we're working with the 2D engine. We're only on two coordinates, X and Y. And um, so what I've had to do is this shadows your actual character. That's what you're moving. And um, see everything on the scene is a scene object to torque. So I've actually had to create two scene objects. And the, the, your player and your shadow. And what the game does is that when you load it up, it moves the player onto your shadow. And based on you know, your Z coordinate, which I've you know, implemented inside the engine, it creates an offset. So that's how I've done that. Um, we have yet to add the ability to jump on things. That's um, going be one of our next things we do. But it's really complicated. Because if you think about it, any of us, anybody's ever played a brawler game, none of them, <laughs> none of the 2D ones ever had good platforming. That's really hard to do. This whole scene will keep going until <laughs> we break this door. You have a gauntlet that'll tell you where to go recently. Well, uh, it was only recently created, I'll show you. Originally, those area guys were really difficult because they only shot straight, and there's only recently where it added the ability of the projectiles to use the Z coordinate system, so they arc. We are part of the Dream Build Play competition, which is, um, that they'll have the competition in August, and that's where a whole bunch of people can um, submit their games to Microsoft, and there's cash prizes, and the ability to be um, moved up to the live arcade section of Xbox, that's where you can get achievements and you get a lot more people that buy your game. Sounds? Um, the Cobalts were done by our friend Mike. He also did the sound of Leo Grin. Originally what we were going to have right here is a pit where you'd fall down and have to fight your way back up. Do your refresh rates stay good when you're running with multiple players? Yeah. So frame rate's pretty consistent? Yeah. Did you uh, have any trouble with that at first? Or? Um, no. We really haven't. Did you have um, we can push a lot of sprites. Did you have to set any sort of max up? Yes, because I've noticed like older games that run on, or for example, um, some games run on faster platforms will actually speed up game time. So did you have to set any sort of max frame rate at all? No, it's um, also all frame rate independent. Oh, okay. Um, Does XNA take care of a lot of that? Yeah. Because I built like a Pong game in there and noticed that, you know, I didn't have to do anything. It was really smooth and and everything as mm -hmm. opposed to doing it. XMA might enforce a 60 hertz. Yes, it might enforce a 60 frames per second. I'm not quite sure. And um, generally, you would want to pro program your game to be um, irrespective of you know, frame rate. Basically, you would um, store the amount of time between frames and use that to determine your movement. So you'd say, you know, this character moves 20 pixels a second, and then um, interpolate over the time. It's all taken care of behind the scenes, really, with um, torque. He has about 15 hit points. And the enemies originally weren't part of the Z system. They had no shadow. And um, I only recently added that in. So we don't have Leogren sprites done yet, so it's only two player at the time. What about duplicate characters, or can you can you do with that? It has to be one or the other. Yeah. Oh, okay. How did you handle the uh, collision detection for the, the various agents? Did you like hard code each one or each one? Oh no, I'll show you. Here. You no, know, I kind of figured like some sort of hit box system. But... Oh yeah, this is the um, level builder that comes with Torque X. They use the same system for tapping. Here's, this is a collision polygon. It's a square, but it can be any, any polygon you want. This is um, how you have a collision. So you have a bunch of polygons everywhere, and the game will um, detect if you have a collision. So when you, you suddenly decide, oh, I want like vehicles. And so the easiest way to do it, instead of duplicating all this code from players, is just inherit it. And so you get um, big inheritance models. And so you have um, problems where, for example, uh, vehicles can now jetpack. And uh, so what they decided to do was do it on more of a aggregate model. And so you have your basic